Okay, I just happened to find this on my feed. I thought it was interesting as fuck. I don't know what it's about. But we're Welcome find once out. again to Leto's Law. Here's Steve Leto. There will be a brief ad at the end of this video. Now, Karen oh. sent me notes that Steve Chuckett story from the New York Times. I'd not seen this, and this is a topic that fascinates me. A Pennsylvania shop offered tarot readings, and then the police came and suggested it was illegal to do so. The police chief in Hanover yeah. visited the shop to educate its owner about an archaic state law that prohibits fortune telling. Now, Christine Hauser wrote this and referred to the law as archaic. Archaic implies it is old and outdated. It's old as fuck. And the question is, I mean, it's old, no question about that. But it, it, it's similar to in West Virginia law. You can beat your wife with a with a stick as big as your thumb on the courthouse at a certain time. If I remembered the time, I wouldn't tell you anyway. But I don't remember the time. But I'm not giving anybody incentives to go start hitting their wives with sticks as big as their thumb. I'm not sure if it's the diameter or the length. That's what I, that's the thing I wonder about. That would be similar to an archaic law right there. Something similar to that. Ah, oh, and there goes my nose. That's nice. <clears throat> is, it, is it outdated? Should there really not be a law forbidding fortune-telling for money? And there's a debate about that. We'll get to that in a second. A few uh, days after well. the owner was profiled in a business newsletter about the tarot card readings they offered at their shop in Hanover, the police chief dropped by for a visit, but not to have his fortune told. Instead, oh, the chief informed the owner at the witchcraft-themed store on October 5th that the any complaints about store. readings would lead to an investigation, citing an archaic state law that makes it illegal to predict the future for money. So ain't that interesting? And this is up in PA. This ain't far from me at all. But isn't that interesting? Who knew that a law like that existed? In PA of all places, but it makes sense because that motherfucker is real close to Salem. But I guess we're not going to talk. Let's not talk about Where the f Isn't Salem in Massachusetts close enough? Closer than West Virginia. Close to fuck enough. Like, close so, enough. So, first of all, he didn't say that he had gotten any complaints. But he said if he gets any, it's going to lead to an investigation because there is this law on the books. It's illegal to predict the future for money. Now, that implies that it's not illegal to predict the future for free. <laughs> the hard part, of course, is predicting the future. But um, the owner says, he informed me basically he's not here to arrest me or press charges. The owner is 26 years old and was speaking in a telephone interview and said regarding the chief, oh, however, no. if he ever gets a report from oh, anyone... No. They're a TikToker. That's the problem. They're probably one of them TikTok motherfuckers. You oh, wishy, let's cleanse the fucking bottle, which is like, what the fuck is the point of doing that? Can anyone explain it to me? Because it does make it smell good on the inside, but the more I think about it over the years, it's just like, what the fuck is the point of doing Like, witch talk is interesting. But a lot of shit don't make no fucking sense to me. Like, what's the point of cleansing, like, a fucking bottle if you're going to put something in it? Don't you want to keep that shit in there for whatever it is you're putting in that bottle? Isn't the essence of what you're putting in the bottle enough? Do you really have to cleanse everything? Do you not? Are you that paranoid? Like, I'm paranoid, but I'm not that paranoid. Uh, but then again, I would know how to pick something up and, like, be able to tell, like, oh, this is something wrong with this. But then again, I've never been drawn to pick anything up that wasn't supposed to be mine either. So, you know. Uh, it's semantics, semantics. He'll be back on my doorstep. Now, the owner of the shop moved to Hanover about four years ago, opened the shop this year, and offers a menu of tarot card readings which cost 10 to to $100, either in person or over Zoom. Now, Wait, what? 10 to $100? to $100. For a, 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 like a tarot card reading, because like fuck the integrity system, or even an honor system. I don't know how I feel about that. Like that's like that's a uh, that's a hell of a lot of money, for one. Don't mind me. I'm just practicing on this thing. I'm doing for a commission. I gotta like figure out how I'm gonna color the cliffs. It helps. For anyone wondering, if you want to glaze over something that's already there, let it completely dry. Then wet it, but don't like try to fuck up the surface to where you waken the pigments that sleep underneath. 
and then just color over with the pigment you actually want. That actually works marvelously. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna draw that over a little bit. Yes. Spread like a horse spreads her legs. Yes. Okay, let's go back to this. I'm, I'm being weird. Hmm? Here's the thing. Signs are posted saying the services are for entertainment purposes only. However, you can also buy candles, soaps, and other handmade merchandise in the store. Okay. Shop with profile in the October spooky season issue of Main Street Hanover, a monthly newsletter that introduces a new business owner in the borough, which is not far from the border with Maryland. The shop, oh, as the name suggests, is meant to think. Signs are posted saying the services are for entertainment purposes only. Okay. However, you can also buy candles, soaps, and other handmade merchandise in the store. Shop with profile in the October spooky season, issue of Main Street Hanover, okay. a monthly newsletter that introduces a new business Fuck owner Hanover. in the borough, which is not far from the border with Maryland. Yeah, the shop, uh, as the name suggests, Fuck is Hanover. meant to be a sanctuary for anyone looking to connect with their spirituality on a deeper level, the article said. A few days after the article was published, uh, the owner was informed by borough officials that the police chief had read it and was going to stop by. So word is getting out. She's at the fuzz. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. So the owner it's, described it's the a, ordeal to her followers on a series of TikTok videos. Member. She's got apparently a couple hundred thousand followers, including one in which um, the owner put on protective jewelry in a black structured blazer, reminiscent of Raven's Wings, to prepare for the visit. The structured blazer, of course, is a nice touch. Okay. Uh, the owner of the visit from Chief Martin and another officer was intimidating. It was. It was. Basically, he didn't give me any advice or anything, adding that the message was, hey, just so you know, this is the law. And Which, by the way, it's always intimidating when the cops show up and say, we need to speak to you about something. Right. Uh, or so I'm told. However, however... <laughs> it's a joke. However... Uh, when it, the police officer goes, you know, just to let you know, this is the law. Some people might look at that and go, that's actually nice of the cop to give you a warning. Because the police officer could simply send in an undercover person and go, what do I get for 20 bucks? I'll tell your future. Boom, you're under arrest. So, well, that's crazy. Um, well, you have to wait until they actually predicted some. But So the owner says he didn't give me any advice or anything. The message was, hey, just so you know, this is the law. The Hanover Police Department said on Friday that the chief was not available to comment. News of his appearance at the shop um, oh, no. was reported by the Philadelphia Inquirer and widely shared on social media. Fueling questions about the use of taxpayer money, what constitutes a good use of police time, and whether the visit amounted to a suppression of religious freedom. Oh, the question my. is, though, if she says this is for entertainment purposes only, is it a religion? The fact that we ta relate tarot cards to religion is, like, awkward as fuck. Am I allowed to say that? I feel like I should say that. It's weird people associate tarot with religion. And maybe that's a big issue. Maybe people spend too much time worshipping it too much. But what do I know? I'm just a hilljack from West Virginia who calls themselves a witch. Who even knows if that's what I actually is this turned? This is turned. There we go. I have no idea how it's looking. Is that better? Is that more fully on my face? How was it turned before? Yeah, I just like that. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. My bad. My bad. Anyway, yeah, I just a lowly, lowly beach lady. Did you? Merci beaucoup. So the chief defended the visit in a post on Facebook and referred to the law, Title 18, Section 7104 which says it is a misdemeanor to pretend for gain or lucre to tell fortunes or predict future events by cards, tokens, the inspection of the head or hands of any person, or by the age of anyone, or by consulting the movements of the heavenly bodies, astrology. And by what? the way, the um, hands or head, hand and palm reading is still very popular. There used to be a whole science of phrenology, studying the bumps in the shape of your head, that's kind of gone by the wayside, but that was a, probably a thing back then. And the word lucre, L-U-C-R-E, yeah. is the root or the base that becomes the word lucrative, which is a more common word in our language. We don't use lucre that much anymore. 
but lucre implies ill-gotten gains. And so in the oath that you take to become an attorney, you actually <coughs> swear that you will not, in essence, work for lucre. And they're saying, basically, that you're, you're not just working to get money. You're doing it for stuff that's justifiable and righteous. So uh, the law says that you can't pretend to tell fortunes or predict future events. Uh, there will be some people in the audience who are going to say, Steve, there are people who can tell the future. And if you believe that, that's fine. You're allowed to believe anything you want to believe. In his statement, the chief said there was never an investigation, nor was there any threat of arrest in the matter. The department would be obligated to... But it'd be weird how you coming in saying that when no one called you to go there <laughs> and it's because you saw it. Makes you wonder, where, what other, <coughs> and mind you, um, PA's got the Amish up there, so it almost kind of makes sense why they're like that, I don't know, PA feels like it doesn't even belong in this dimension, as far as I'm aware, but, um, I wonder how many other states have this, and if it's going to be dug up. How long ago did this happen? Two days ago. Huh. This is interesting. I'm glad I stopped on this, though. Like, I didn't even know something like this is going on, but this is very intriguing. Investigate, he said, if a complaint was made against someone for engaging in acts qualifying as fortune telling. So he's saying, look, no one's filed a complaint. But if someone complains, I've got to investigate. Because remember, he took an oath also. The sheriff took an oath to enforce the laws. So if there's a law on the books that is so old and outdated that it should not be there anymore, actually, the legislature should go in and remove it. They, they remove old laws all the time. But which Or overwrite them. Or dangerous. So that's something that they could do be done. They the contouring done. thing and hide their So face he suggested, man. contact your legislature. Uh, meanwhile, the owner has studied tarot and witchcraft for 13 years, said tarot readings are meant to help a person by giving clarity about their path in life. They do not tell a person what is in store for them, such as whether they will win money or reveal the whereabouts of missing loved ones, they said. Uh, I pull my cards and study the symbols. My job is to string these things together of what I'm seeing. It is up to their free will. There's nothing set in stone. I am 26. I don't know the answers. <laughs> you think of me and how ageism is always used to like justify why you don't know what the fuck you're doing, but you're still doing it? To be young... How much of a dumbass thinking that's going to work with our old ass? No, because, like, like, we didn't try using that excuse when we were your age, youngin'. Welcome to the fucking wall, motherfucker. Like, like welcome. <laughs> welcome. And I, I like the fact that she said that. And, you know, so local news organizations have poked fun at the statute. Uh, in 2022, WHTM-TV included it in a list of laws that residents might consider antiquated, useless, or just plain silly. Such as, and this is an example they give, catching a fish with one's bare hands or buying a car on a Sunday. Uh, there were what they called blue laws for years. There was a bunch of stuff oh, you yeah. couldn't do on a Sunday. Uh, there was quite commonly a law against buying alcohol on a Sunday. It's and then later they said you can't buy alcohol on a Sunday before noon. Uh, yeah, that, we actually have that in West Virginia. Um, you cannot buy alcohol until it's like 1 o'clock in West Virginia. I think it's midnight on Sunday is when it go the blue law thing will go into effect. And years ago, I used to work at this place called the Gumart, which is a little convenience store in Clarksburg. It's still there to this very day. Lots of different people. The owners are all different. Looks like the fucking ghetto like it always did. I just didn't see it because I was in my 20s, right? And... That little place when it was like midnight or whatever time it was for like alcohol to no longer be served. The register would literally, if I tried bringing up alcohol, or was it 2 o'clock? It might have actually been 2 in the morning. It might have been 2 a.m., which is like, I think is actually the cutoff time, if not 3 a.m. or something like that in West Virginia for alcohol to be served. That's the cutoff. 
I think it was like 2 a.m. But what would happen is if I tried to ring up alcohol after that point, which, mind you, this never happened any other day of the week. It was always going into Sunday, Sunday morning. But if I tried to ring it up, it, it, the register would kick back and be like, blue, lo blue law enacted. We cannot sell alcohol or some shit like that on the register. And these were old registers. Like you, There were buttons. Buttons existed so you could memorize where the fuck your hand needed to go. Right, so the register would completely kick it out and would not ring up any alcohol. West Virginia to this day still has that law. You cannot buy liquor. Um, you might be able to buy wine and beer after noon or one o'clock. I can't remember the time, but like, I don't think you could. I don't. I think they changed the laws where you could buy hard liquor now after one or two o'clock p.m. on Sunday, but I'm not sure about that. I know wine and definitely beer though. Those two definitely opened up back in the day. But yeah, that's still a thing in West Virginia. Kentucky has dry counties. Where it's like, it's a dry county because you can't get alcohol. In Kentucky, you actually have to travel to a whole different county to get alcohol. And I had a friend from PA and like they informed me that alcohol is owned by the state. So when you're buying liquor, you're literally buying from the government. Which was like, what? Just ignorant as fuck. I don't think I would drink, and I definitely wouldn't. But yeah, that like it, it, were, uh, blue laws are everywhere, and they're also fucking weird and different. And then they said, "Ah, screw it." Uh, and they're also in Michigan for years. <gasps> you couldn't buy cars on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, that was more of a protectionist thing, but we'll get into that later. But catching a fish with one's bare hands right now, there's a small section of the audience that goes, "That makes complete sense." What? And it's men who fish and women who fish who understand the laws and regulations of fishing. Because uh. they do regulate how you catch fish. If there's no regulation of how you catch fish, you'd go get hand grenades and do it that way. Which is actually a really, really easy way to fish. Now, you, you can't pick what you I catch. Mean, yeah, you but... simply drop it and just, you know, after it goes off, see what flows to the surface. So they've got to regulate how you fish. So believe it or not, there are some places where you can spear fish in Michigan, but you've got to be certain kinds of fish. In certain places. But you can't go out and spearfish for trout, I don't think. And so they actually regulate how you fish. Because if they didn't, people would just wipe out all the fish. I mean, that's you a might really say, but good Steve, point. Are you telling me that if you were allowed to catch them with your bear? That's a really good point. <laughs> I mean, that, like, it's facts. It's facts. It makes sense. But I'm sitting here like... It kind of doesn't. It, it does, but it doesn't. Hands. No, no, the point is, they simply say, to catch a fish legally, you must do it with a hook. If it's this kind of fish during this season with this kind of license. Oh, you want to go fishing for these certain kind of fish that are seen in this lake during this one time of the year? Yeah, we'll allow you to spear fish. But it's the fish you spear has got to be over a certain size. Here's your limit. Got to get a license, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that okay? makes sense. So they regulate that. Makes complete sense. So, in 2019, the York Daily Record included this statute in a roundup of wacky laws, noting that it also prohibited making love potions and drawing well, maps to buried treasure. <laughs> Presumably, <laughs> where you made up the treasure. Obviously, if there was a treasure there and I drew up a map to it, I can't imagine that hurts anybody, right? The law barring fortune-telling is rarely prosecuted, according to the Daily Local News reports, uh, in a 2021 article about a Philadelphia woman who pleaded guilty to four counts of fortune-telling and was sentenced to 14 days to a year in jail. What? A lawyer in Pennsylvania said that fortune-telling businesses in the state use disclaimers that their services are for entertainment purposes only. The law protects gullible people from being ripped off, he said. Even as they bristled at the chief's visit, the owner of the shop acknowledged that the law had a purpose. It is there to protect people from scam artists. And I remember a couple of years ago, I don't know if the video is still up or not, wow. but I did a video about a fortune-teller down in Florida. And she would meet people who believed that she had some kind of pipeline to spirits and could control things and future events and all kinds of things. And she would tell people that, oh, there's somebody else out there who's hired a competing fortune teller and has cast a spell on you. Shit. And you're going to have bad luck and bad things will happen to you unless you... Shit! Shit! Who here has ever listened to tarot readings and heard something along those lines? 
Oh, they hired a practitioner. They did this. They did that. This is like, wow, that sounds almost exactly the same. Like a script that's being replayed over and over. And then it drives people mad. Either they, they get frustrated. They go to Jesus, which is just, what the fuck is he going to do, but whatever. Um, they just keep going on with it. Or maybe people do what I do. It's just like, ah, maybe I should try to like figure things out without that. I don't really need them anymore anyway. But still, this is just like, oh shit. In the real world, there are laws and they will be obeyed. Also, did you guys, like, we need to look at PPP loans. We need to look at PPP loans. Why? You'll see. Pay me a lot of money to cast the counter spell and just Gosh, weird stuff pretty, like that. Yeah, and hard. there are people who believe in this stuff. And so oh, next yeah. thing you know, someone just says, yeah, my, uh, my aunt, my uncle, just drained their bank account to pay a fortune teller to counter a spell cast by a computer. What? what? Really? Wow. Yes, it turns out there are actually people out there who believe in this stuff. Now, the real question is, if I walk in off the street, don't say anything. Just walk in off the street. Yeah. Say, hi, 50 bucks, what do I get? What? Will they say, this is simply entertainment, or will it be couched as if it's real? And the reason I'm asking this is right around the time I became an attorney, uh, where I was living... On my way into my office, I passed by a little building, and, and it's not there anymore, but it was there for decades. And it was a fortune teller who lived there. It was a house mm -hmm. on the edge of uh, an area that was owned business. Yeah, yeah. And I think the person lived in the house, mm -hmm. and then just turned the lights on, and then people would walk up the door and, and come inside and, and get their fortunes told. And it actually okay. had a bunch of things outside about a fortune teller, and you know could tell your future and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and at the time... I spent a lot of time litigating with a law called the Michigan Consumer Protection Act. And if you pay for goods and services, you're entitled to get what you pay for. Yeah. And so if I go to a fortune teller, and the fortune teller claims, and I'm not talking about the one in the story, I'm talking about the one I'm, you know, here in Michigan Yeah. as a hypothetical. If the fortune teller had claimed, I can predict your future, pay me mm -hmm. 50 bucks. Yeah. If I pay her 50 bucks and she's wrong, didn't she violate the Consumer Protection Act for failure to provide a promised benefit? Yes. And I would have argued that she did. Now, of course, her attorney would say, no, this is for entertainment purposes only. And the question is, where did that come in? Where was the in other words, is that on a, a sign on the wall? Because it didn't say that outside the building. Oh. I never went in. I just was always, this is like a thought exercise for me, right? Okay. And so I'm really curious to know, and I'm not talking about, again, the person in the story here, but just generally speaking, if I walk into a fortune teller who's got an established place of business so that they actually have got to watch it a little bit, mm -hmm. and I walk in, and I don't say a lot, but I just put some money down and go, what do I get? They, oh, tarot card reading. Okay, what? What the fuck I, is I'm that? I'm really stupid here. I, I, I know that a tarot card is a deck of cards. First off, like, who walks into, like, a witchy shop and throwing down 50 bucks? I mean, like, what can I get? Like, there's all sorts of shit you can get. But if it's specifically just a fortune teller place, okay. But if it's just like, if there are options, it's just like they're going to point them out to little things. What if the person who's reading tarot cards isn't even in the room? Like, I'm just asking questions, you know, like, what if they're not even there? <laughs> but they're not like regular cards. Um, what does this do? What, what do you, what, what, explain what's happening here. And if that person just says, oh, this is entertaining. I'm going to put some cards down and just tell you some funny things. Okay. Okay, that's fine. But if the person puts down cards and says, oh, you understand you need to do this but not do this, do this but not do this, mm. and never says this is for entertainment purposes only, what is that? What is that? So, again, I know a lot of people, the vast majority of people in my audience right now are going, Steve, anybody who falls this deserves to fall for it. And on some level, I kind of agree. But unfortunately, I've met people who actually tell me, I know somebody who can predict the future. I know, I know somebody who can. And I always say, then why do they charge you 20 bucks a reading? Why don't they just go buy lottery tickets? Right. Oh, it doesn't work that way. Oh, oh, it doesn't work? What's it? It doesn't work oh that way. Oh, my God! It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> of course, of course it doesn't. It only works when you hand them $20. <laughs>
So, there you go. Like a Pennsylvania shop sh- offered tarot was, card readings. Was that, then the police name? came. What was his name? That guy who always challenged psychics and shit. With the million dollar uh, challenge. What, what? Let's look at him really quick. Because this is very entertaining. I have to say. Like, I have to get ready for my cat's appointment. But, like, I, it's not until, like, 10.30ish. Let's look up, uh, uh pull up here. Where is this dude? Where is he at? I don't want to know about Tsukiana. I don't want to know about Tsukiana. I'm so sick of them bitches. Let's see. Million dollar challenge. Randy. I can't remember his name for the life of me. Oh, someone actually did claim it? Cool. I'm not interested in that. I want to watch the other ones, so. This one, yeah, this one looks interesting. I've always, I find him the most intriguing person because he uses his brain. Oh, I hope you guys heard that. Now yeah. shattering conventional wisdom, John Stossel. Who? How many of you believe in ghosts? Why is there a stock market? couple of you, but you raised your hand before. All right, well, 20... I'm glad it's fewer now. <laughs> 20 believe in astrology, but 20 work. Well, all people have to do is uh, make a claim, come to us, fill out the form, arrange a protocol, and then we have somebody else do the test. I don't... With John? Over here. Okay. Yes. Okay, now, I'm going to ask you to hold your hands. I want to see someone fail at shit. Let's try this one. You went to stop. Okay. Stop. Oops, sorry, that's oh. what I, I dropped it. Okay, Craig, who is this guy and what's going on? That's Amazing Randy. He's a magician and he's doing a magic trick. Ooh, magic? Sweet. Yeah. Stop. 91. Pick up that book if you okay. have some time, please. James Randy. With an I. But it is Brittany! With your ears! <laughs> he had older things on here. Is this it? I lost my boyfriend tragically. Um. A few years ago, they never found him. And I've had such a hard time since. Every day. The reason why you didn't find him is because he's in water. And to find him in water, it's like the girl is missing in a room. Yeah, it turns out they weren't dead. Is he even in he- any of the... No! Why is his face on here? I want to see that where he, like, gets people. This one. This is the one I want. This one's interesting as In the 1980s, the American media began to take an interest in James Heydrich, a young man of remarkable physical prowess who also claimed to have psychic powers. Heydrich could apparently make a pencil spin without touching it, make a dollar bill turn on a pin under an upturned fish tank, or riffle the pages of a telephone directory. Danny Corum, a professional magician turned investigative journalist, was suspicious. He persuaded Heydrich to take part in a TV documentary. He uh, fooled millions of people here in this country. And then scientists. Scientists took him into the... This is a fucking magician, right? It doesn't matter if it's stage magic or witchcraft. A magician is a magician. A magician can always tell when someone's pulling some shit. University of Utah. Heydrich had built up a cult-like following in Salt Lake City with a peculiar mix of martial arts and the paranormal. He would astonish his young students by seeming to make heavy punch bags in his gym swing without touching them. It only worked at a certain time of day. See, it was an old building, had yeah. kind of a corrugated metal roof. Okay, so about three o'clock in the afternoon, roof would start to heat up, 
But when it would heat up, it would expand and shift. And then he says, uh, I want you to start imagining that you, the building's starting to crack, to rotate. And you'd hear these popping sounds. And then because the, ro the, the roof is, you know, expanding, it, it would cause the gym bags, which were suspended from the ceiling, to start to sway. See, this is why you need science, because it, and it'll tell you why, why people are full of shit. Explains things. Yeah, it'd be a little more explainable if he did it at different times, but it always at the same point in time when the atmosphere would change just slightly. Smart. Believe it to a magician to figure out like how smart you are. That's always fun. Very impressive. One by one, Corin began to work out how Hydric's feats were done. Most of them depended on an extraordinary ability to exhale a strong stream of breath without it showing on his face or lips. It was strong enough even to pass through any tiny gaps between the fish tank and the table. So in other words, he's never been a smoker. He got strong lungs. He had developed the page-turning effect while serving a prison sentence, using the Bible to impress fellow inmates. And he would tell prisoners, if you will pray with me, uh, the Holy Spirit will cause the pages of the Bible to turn. This is blasphemous. And he would actually blow on the pages. And a lot of times he'd let the inmate think that they were causing you know, the pages to turn. Hydric became confused when he saw Coram replicating his own psychic phenomenon. You know how the Bible talks about abominations and witchcrafts and sorcerers and the teller of times and shit? That's more or less what it's relating to. Like, taking the word. That's blasphemous as fuck. I didn't even think of that. And using the Bible to do that as well. Not even because the sheets are like... Whatever. It, 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 but because, like... Meh. And like even thought books? that Coram might have genuine powers. The toughest part, this though, like was lips. exposing the tricks without causing him to become hostile because he was a very dangerous... Individual. Oh, God. oh! Realizing that he had been found out, Heydrich agreed to make a full confession on camera. I'm not going like that, because that can be seen. I am taking air from inside and causing it to come out in a way to where nothing here shows. My whole idea behind this in the first place was to see how dumb America was, how dumb the world is. We didn't even show how we solved the trick! Did it show how he solved the trick? Serving a prison sentence, using the Bible to impress fellow inmates. There was a whole trick he did. I don't know. And what he would tell that prisoners, or if you will pray with me, uh, the Holy Spirit will cause the pages of the Bible to turn. This is blasphemous. And he would actually. Like no, there was a whole thing where it's like James hear it. Because there's a thing that Randy Stairs did. There it is. I think this is it. If not, there's another one underneath that I know for sure is it. Yes. Now, you have been touring our country, performing as a magician, but you have also been debunking psychics. Oh, I didn't know he was a magician, Would too. you explain to... That makes so much more sense if he is a magician too, because he'd be like, this, "No, I know what the fuck you're doing. It's not gonna take me that long to figure it out." Let's show you what real magic is, motherfucker. That's what he doing. Damn, I didn't know he was a magician too. To our audience, why you He's devote so much time to this crusade of yours? Well, I'll tell you, Bob. I feel it's a very serious matter to be, particularly raising a younger generation, who are being. Childhood, how did it all begin? Well, everyone's born with it. It's just a matter of development. There he is with his pencil.
Definitely move. Now, is it true that you can also turn the pages of this telephone directory? Yes, it is. And you will do that for us? I'll try. Should I take the pencil off the table? Sh yes. All right. There you are, James. You would you like to open the pencil it to any on the page, table. or should you no, want me to do it? I'll be happy to. Look at him. He's concentrating so hard on his lies. All men do is lie. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This one lies, though. Okay, let's get it. I'll get it. Ready? Ready. Oh my god, look at him go. Look at him go with the abilities. Magic. The now, these demonstrations, you did these same demonstrations on That's Incredible. Yes, I did. And as you know, the amazing Randy maintains that you did not use psychic power, but okay. that it was trickery. Hmm. And he is prepared to pay you $10,000. Oh, this is even If you can yet. do it using psychic power. He's still power. stacking the money. Later in our show, you two will meet head to head and we will test your psychic powers to the nth degree. And I know that you at home are not going to. And you claim to have done that with psychic power. Yeah, bring, bring the man. Bring the wizard out. Look at him. A wizard he's just like, I've been now, studying these, these scrolls for years. Now you saw James' demonstration from back <laughs> Yes, I did. And do you accept that as a demonstration of psychic power, I or do you believe that he shooting, used trickery? Even before we even thought about I don't accept shit. it as a demonstration of psychic power, Bob. I think that the solution is rather simple. I think that Mr. Heydrich is merely, to accomplish this effect, blowing on both the page and on the pencil. I see. Now, you originally shit, asked him to demonstrate in two different ways his psychic power. But as I understand it, you are now prepared to waive the demonstration with the pencil. Yes, and the reason is rather simple, because the pencil reacts to even the current of the air conditioning in this studio. It will be very difficult <coughs> to try to put controls on it in such a way that normal currents of air that are present all the time would not move the pencil. For example, it moves very, very easily. All right, you're not going to ask him to do that. That's one down, one to go, James. You are prepared to pay him I think I did all the hand movement and shit. <coughs> For shits and giggles. It was just... Just that. It was just that. <coughs> That's why he's wearing the pantaloons. $10,000 if he can turn the page of the telephone directory with certain controls. That's that right. right. Mm -hmm. You have the $10,000, do you, Randy? I do indeed. It's uh, right here. I've carried this check now for going on 17 years, Bob. Uh, there it is, a check for $10,000 awardable to the gentleman like, should he be able to successfully perform years, the demonstration. I would like to me. introduce our yeah. panel of judges. And our first judge here, Dr. John Palmer, is okay, a psychologist and professor wanna... of parapsychology at John F. Kennedy University. The seat right there, Dr. Palmer. Where's we have Dr. Is Stephen this, Drake. I want to see, Astronomy. why would you put it in two parts? How old is this? Oh, 14 years ago. Okay, that's why. That's why. Uh, since my theory as yet a... ...will demonstrate that he is doing it with his breath. That's correct. All right. Look, at, look, 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 Okay, okay. I wish that I had found this sooner because this would have made way... This would have been way more simpler. ...act by using this one very time. simple control. Now, uh, let me just emphasize that this one control will not stop him from turning the page of the telephone directory. That's right. But you hope to the judge's satisfaction will demonstrate that he is doing it Look with his breath. Look at this smart motherfucker. Correct. Look right. at this smart motherfucker. Look at this smart motherfucker. Now what I Look have what here doing. is particles of a white plastic, which when given a good puff, good heavy puff of air, 
will, I think, rather conclusively show whether or not... This, this old-ass motherfucker cut up a whole bunch of paper into very tiny, very light pieces. Lighter than the pages of that book. Extremely light. We'll be blown around by any sudden gust of air. This smart motherfucker. Blowing is a method accomplished. Now, it will not, perhaps, in some way, differentiate between genuine psychic power and actual blowing. But it certainly should be very interesting indeed to see what now occurs. Well, do you maintain that if the page of the telephone direct returns, that we will see movement in the styrofoam as well? I think that it's pretty logical. We've experimented with it, Bob, and that's what we have determined in the experiments. Very well. Are you ready to proceed? I am indeed. Judges, you're like, ready? Go ahead and blow, James. Bitch. Ready? Mm -hmm. Smile like a donut. Go ahead. Now, look at how far back he is now. Nowhere near close. He cannot, he, he doesn't know how to think this. Look at him. He's like, how am I going to lie my way out of this one? Mm-hmm. It's like, how am I going to do this? That's what he's thinking, like, I don't know how to do this, and I'm moving it all the paper. Can we talk about this man's stature, his posture for a moment? The slouch, the overhanging neck, like he never holds himself up at all. Maybe because he's tall, I don't know, but he just gets on my nerves, but that's what I wanted to show y'all. This time, how many, how many pages? One. Just one page, once. Oh, how many, how many do I gotta do? Now, James, you had another question. Mm hmm what is it? What would you like okay. to Okay. The styrofoam and the lights form electricity which pulls the page. Look. What? what? What do you mean pulls the page? What are you talking about? It pulls the page down. What well, does it doesn't allow Can a current run through wood? I thought wood and rubber. I mean, unless the wood is wet, but I thought wood and rubber were the one thing, were the two things that uh, electricity couldn't really like have a current through. Am I wrong? Like. Questioning myself. Freeing the pages. That's All right, mean. and uh, what would you like to ask us to ask Randy to allow you to do or for me to, to do? To either take something else, either lighter or something that is going to keep, that isn't going to form like a static electricity. You mean put something else, some other material around something here? Something that is not foam. Foam causes static electricity, and the light is what heats it up. Oh, so that's All right, foam. Randy, that's is there anything mean. else that you can put around the telephone directly? I've heard the question, but the question is not valid because it's making an assumption which is not true. The foam does not in any way create static electricity, and Mr. Heydrich, in demonstrating that the pages were clinging together, didn't demonstrate it to my satisfaction. I think uh, we could perhaps ask the judges for their opinion on that. I am not a scientist, so I'm not qualified to declare on it. Judges? Whatever static electricity exists in the styrofoam would not really affect the movement of the page or the clinging of the pages together my opinion i would i would add that if this is in fact psychic functioning i don't really see why that would make a difference very well randy would you allow me to turn the perhaps half a dozen pages and then put them back uh, oh yes you may do that please uh, james i'll just lift up one two 
Lift them in a bunch, if you would, uh, Bob. Just Should take about a quarter of an inch. Just take a fuck right, time, yeah, like that. Take That's a fuck fine. time. Gently place them down gently so it doesn't disturb the foam. There you go. I know. Uh, well, Shake it oh, out. I thought you oh, the other place. way? Yeah, the other way. That's what I thought you meant. Would that sure. be helpful to you? The static is going to still be here because oh of the foam. Oh, my God. The static is Well, there. it is the opinion of the judges that there is not enough static formed by the, the foam to be a problem. So, uh, under the conditions agreed upon, it, uh... So, even back then, like, people would be like, well, no, that's not how it works. Should we listen to the dude who can't stand straight? For nothing? Or should we listen to the people who were so invested in their work, they didn't bother with skin care? It would seem that now you should at least try... I'm just saying, if you're an ugly scientist, I'm probably going to believe what you say, because you look way too dedicated to what the fuck you're focused on to pay attention and nothing else. Don't let me find out you run around in the diaper, though. That's none of my business. With psychic power to turn the page of the telephone directory, James. Okay. Do it. Oh, look at him. He's just like, oh, man. He's not going to even bother trying. He's not. I thought those were pieces of paper. I didn't realize it was foam. I always thought it was paper. I don't know why I thought it was paper. But it's like, paper would eat... The, the fucking foam would be a little heavier than the paper. So technically, James Randi would even be helping him out. Even if he moved it a little. He could just say, no, that was from the page flipping. He could easily say that with them all surrounding like that. Maybe just watch if they go over top. Mm hmm? Okay, well, I'm done with that. I want to finish this. How much longer? Yeah. But they didn't shut the operator down. They just warned her there is a law on the books. We're just letting you know that. And so maybe the operator needs to put up a bigger sign that says, Entertainment purposes only, and see how that goes. Karen, thanks for sending it for the New York Times. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh. I said at the top there'd be a brief ad at the end of the video. Here we are. And I'm talking to you, of course, about Factor. Fact oh, well, that was the end of his video. So, yeah. I thought that was absolutely interesting. We got to get a, watch a bunch of uh, James Randi. Or at least we tried to, because there was way more in there to everything. But that was just what I wanted to prove a point to, because it's just like, oh. But it's very interesting to know that PA has that shit. Like, thank goodness, I never, like, tried to move the PA. Ugh. Fucking Amish country, anyway. Yeah. Well, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.